Russ Wilds of Front Office Sports here with Robin Harris of the Ivy League uh, at Yankee Stadium for the Dartmouth and Princeton uh, football game celebrating the 150th anniversary of the first football game between Princeton and Rutgers. So uh, Robin, I guess back in 2009 when you first accepted the role, what were some of the outside perceptions of you coming in, I guess, you know, of the Ivy League and the things that you really wanted to, uh, you know, change or sort of implement when you first took the role? So we had a terrific foundation within the Ivy League of having uh, success in a variety of sports. We have broad-based sports sponsorship and we had success across our 35 Ivy League sports. And what we were looking to do was to modernize and evolve and grow and promote the successes that we have across the landscape of Ivy League sports and really do it in a very powerful and proud way, knowing that we would remain true and consistent with our founding principles. Upon the launch of the Ivy League Network, what were some of the goals with regards to sort of the content and the programming and, and your partners sort of that uh, led to the launch of the network? So, you know, it was a multi-year process. We started discussing the possibility of pooling all of our resources together and having all of our schools come together forming an Ivy League digital network that would have a high level of broadcast. And what we were able to do, I think we started those conversations around 2011. And then we were able to make sure that every school was able to, with their rights expiring at the right time, come together and form the Ivy League digital network, which was on the New Lion platform for five years. And we were ahead of the curve. We had all eight schools involved and everything that they broadcast live was included with the Ivy League Digital Network subscription. And we were able to demonstrate that we had a fan base that was willing to pay for the content that our schools produced. And at the same time, we had an ongoing television package. We had mostly football on NBC Sports Network, and we had some regional deals that also were national. Occasionally, we would have some basketball games on, and we, of course, had our lacrosse tournaments on ESPN. And as the, our contract with New Lion was expiring, we started to look at what was next and how do we position the Ivy League for the next um, 10 to 15 years. Earlier this year, the conference launched uh, sort of the marketing initiative and Unrivaled Experience. Walk through sort of uh, programming that marketing campaign and what are the goals it's trying to accomplish? Yeah, so the Unrivaled Experience campaign came about as we were working with our athletic directors on how to best distinguish the Ivy League and what we offer to our student athletes. And we had been communicating about the benefits of an Ivy League athletic and educational experience. And we wanted to make that more powerful so that it, our messages were noticed. And in particular, we're the sixth best conference nationally in the all sport athletic metrics while being top in the academic metrics. And somehow that combination of outstanding athletic success with a world-class education the public was not understanding our athletic success. Sure. And so the Unrivaled Experience campaign is designed to illustrate how we provide the best possible combination and that our student athletes thrive on that challenge. We surveyed over a thousand student athletes. We talked to more than a hundred alumni and other constituents related to the Ivy League. And we found out they really appreciated the experience that they have and that they know that the challenges that they face in the, with their academics and their athletics have prepared them for lifelong success. And in addition, we discovered that more than 60% of our student athletes are involved in something other than sport. And to us, that's really critical because it shows that you can be an Ivy League student athlete and you can focus on your education you can focus on your athletics and you can also be a student socially and culturally with sure. your activities. And, and you personally, sort of switching gears, have been on the forefront of uh, concussion prevention and education. Sort of uh, why is that sort of personal to you or why do you think that the Ivy League should be at the forefront of that outside of the obvious academic reasons uh, and prestige of the conference? Yeah, so we have really been a leader in the concussion prevention and management and research. 
And it, we've been, um, I think we've been involved in that for about 10 years now. We started with football. We expanded our study to include a number of other sports. And now we have a comprehensive um, study underway regarding concussions in all sports. And what's really important here and why this work is so meaningful is we are trying to protect the long-term well-being of all of our student athletes and um, trying to protect them while they're an Ivy League student athlete and also trying to help the world at large with what we discover. So for example, through our data and our research, we realized that concussions and kickoffs in the game of football were occurring much more frequently than they should given the number of kickoffs there are in a sure. game. And so through our data, we implemented an experimental rule where the number of concussions and kickoffs went down. The NCAA ultimately followed suit and implemented a modified version of the rule. So we feel incredibly gratified that our work is helping not only Ivy League student athletes, but student athletes beyond the Ivy League. So also uh, alongside concussions, mental health is something that's very important to you in the league. Sort of uh, what are some of the initiatives that you're working on to uh, generate sort of uh, mental health awareness, so to speak? Yeah, mental health is obviously an important issue for our country and for um, everyone. And I think it's been wonderful to see how the conversation is welcomed and embraced and the stigma is starting to um, go away. And we are working to help promote uh, good mental health with our student athletes. We conducted a summit this summer with the Patriot League, bringing together professionals as well as student athletes from all Ivy League and Patriot League schools together. And we, um, all of our campuses work with the resources available to all students on campus to provide mental right. health, as well as some athletic specific resources, because it is sometimes different when you are a student athlete and when you come to an Ivy League school and you're used to succeeding in the classroom and on the field and maybe being the best at both in your high school right. or you know um, other teams. And then you come to the Ivy League and you're really good, but you may not be the best. And how do those individuals manage that adjustment and we're working to provide them the resources and support and allow the conversations to occur. So time management and early recruiting are also very important to the league. Uh, how is that sort of uh, you know instilled throughout your student athletes? So the Ivy League has taken a leadership role with the NCAA in trying to help influence national rules regarding time management and early recruiting for student athletes. It's a continuation of the way we approach athletics, where uh, student athletes should be treated as close as possible to the rest of the student body. So for example, with time management, we don't allow summer workouts with coaches. We want our student athletes to have the opportunity to have internships and jobs that are gonna prepare them for life after college. We also manage their time during the course of the academic year so that during the season they can focus on their sport, but out of season we put more limitations than the NCAA allows. And we had individuals involved in the NCAA legislative process that helped influence new NCAA rules that also um, modified the time management uh, of our student athletes nationally. In addition, with early recruiting, uh, the way our process work is that the admissions office is the entity that admits our student athletes and they only look at credentials going into the senior year. That's the earliest. And nationally recruiting in many sports and commitments were occurring during the sophomore year. And what we've seen nationally is an increase in transfers and a lot of issues with student athletes committing before they know who they really are and what they want, and before the school really knows how good a student is that individual. They haven't even taken any tests. So we worked with the NCAA to put in new rules that delay the official commitments of student athletes in many sports. And in terms of just overall progressiveness of the league throughout your tenure, what are some of the things that maybe you're most proud of? I think the, what I'm most proud of is the way that we have been able to evolve 
and modernize and remain true to our principles. So a great example of that is our um, television connections where we've had um, a long history of having football on linear television, basketball and other sports on occasion. And now we have this wonderful partnership with ESPN for 10 years. We've done that by while remaining true to the principles that we're gonna play our games on the days that make sense for our student athletes so that they're not going to miss class to play on um, television. We're not having football on Tuesday night to get on television. 